Hello everybody, and welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail, and today we'll be discussing the disappearance of Matthew Green. Matthew Green was 39 years old from Bethlehem, a math teacher at Nazareth Area High School, and went missing in July of 2013 near Mammoth Lakes, California, in the Eastern Sierra. Matthew was an extremely experienced hiker and climber, so this was a huge shock to most of his friends. If anybody could survive out in the wilderness, it was Matthew. And I can actually remember when this happened because my sister is a big climber, and I remember her talking about how everybody at her climbing gym was just so upset about this. I guess a lot of people knew him in the climbing and hiking community, so I can remember when this was 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 going on. Um, Matthew Green last spoke to his parents on July 16, 2013, on the phone from California. He told them that he was having a blown he had had a blown head gasket on his car, and that he expected to get it back on July 18th, and then catch up with his friends who'd been hiking. When he called, he was telling them that he was just going out for one more long day in the mountains, but he did not mention where. Now, Matthew went missing in the Yosemite area, which is a huge, very vast area of mountains and streams and beautiful waterfalls, and it is a very beautiful area. Lots of scenic pictures can be taken there. There's tons of hiking trails, and actually, as the years have gone by, it's become one of the more uh, popular national parks. In fact, when I was there, it was so crowded that I couldn't even find a uh, pull-off that wasn't parked in with uh, so many cars. So it really is unbelievable that he went missing in such a busy time. And especially since, again, he was such an experienced hiker. So uh, he had dropped his car off in town to get it fixed. And he had mentioned to his friends and others that he wanted to get on Glacierite, and that meant the Ritter Range in the part of the Sierra. He also had a practice tearing out pages from his guidebook for the adventure that he was planning on doing and then replacing them. The only two pages that were missing uh, were the rugged terrain around Mount Ritter, the highest point among 15 smaller peaks known as the Minarets. Most people are in agreement that Matthew was most likely heading for the forest and trails named for the legendary pioneer naturalists like John Muir and Ansel Adams. So most of the search uh, parties were conducted in the Ritter Range, and this covers uh, 600 and some odd miles of area, which again is quite daunting. In Kurt Breswin's article for the Lehigh Valley newspaper, he talks about how that metal volcanic rock is like walking on graham crackers. So apparently it is very challenging terrain and it can easily be understood where a fall could have taken. And Mount Ritter peaks out at 13,143 feet. So it's no joke. But having said that, Green was an extremely experienced outdoorsman and hiker. He had been in Papua New Guinea for three years while serving in the Peace Corps. Um, he arrived in the Eastern Sierra Mountains on June 27, 2013 to climb with some friends, but when his Subaru car broke down, they continued on without him while he stayed behind at the campground near Mammoth Lakes. However, his friends returned to the campsite on July 17th, and he was nowhere to be seen. They discovered that his car had been repaired, but he had never picked it up and hadn't returned to the Shady Rest camp Campground for over a week. This is where the Mammoth Lake Police Department was informed, and the search began. At the campsite, authorities found some of the gear missing, a guidebook with some pages torn out, out of it, as we discussed that this is something that he usually would do. The pages were from the Minaret area, including Mount Ritter, Mount Banner, but Green hadn't signed any of his name on either of the summits logs at those locations, so it's still all speculation as to where he went. Green was officially reported missing on July 29th and was last seen at the Shady Rest campground while waiting for his car to be repaired. After the news, several of his friends flew out and joined the search for Green. They searched into the night and canvassed bus drivers, store owners, 
The Mammoth Flakes uh, posted flyers at trailheads, ch checked summit, summit registrars, and spent several days in the backcountry looking for clues and evenings. So this was a very, very involved search. The search also took to the skies with a helicopter flying over some of the more rugged terrain and one of Green's friends who brought a high resolution camera and got a private plane to search over all the more desolate areas. And more California search and rescue personnel had also uh, volunteered their own personal time and got involved in this search to help look for Green. Some of the theories are that he may have been kidnapped while hitchhiking back to the car dealership or that he may have even got into some sort of a, a argument or altercation with the people at the car dealership because he was such an experienced hiker and outdoorsman. It's hard for most people to believe that he ran into trouble in the wilderness, especially with how prepared he was and how well outfitted he was for the, the given terrain and how well he usually planned for for his adventures and um, so it really is a mystery as to where where he went or what happened to him and no sign of him has been found since none of his articles of clothing nothing that he was carrying his ice axe nothing so uh, if you are in the Yosemite Mammoth Lake area please be on the lookout for these items I will uh, put a Another picture here at the end of this video of the things that he was hiking with and some of his gear. And as always, the information will be linked in the description as to the proper authorities who to contact. If you do have any information or if you do stumble upon any of these items, do not pick them up, do not touch them, note the location, take pictures of them, and then contact the proper authorities. Matthew Green is about 5'11", 155 pounds, has blue eyes, blondish, brownish, very short hair, he is thought to have last been wearing due to um, the friends going through the gear that was left at the camp. He's thought to have been wearing a blue outdoor research baseball cap, a black tee over a long green shirt, long sleeve green shirt, mountaineering approach shoes, a black and white mountain hardware pack, a Petzl ice axe, black diamond crampons, and either carrying or wearing yellow Las Portita, Las Portifa mountaineering boots. He did not have any overnight gear with him. So again, it's, it's hard to say what he was doing or what he was going to do. Uh, a couple years after, three years after he went missing, um, some of the hikers that had been camped neighboring to him noticed a missing persons poster and had never spoken to the authorities. So they went to the authorities and talked to them and said that they had offered to take him out on a hike, but he declined, but they could not remember or do not recall where he said he was going. On July 21st, his campsite number 164 hadn't been paid for three nights, so the rangers came over and went through his stuff. The tent had his neatly folded laundry gear inside, his food was in the bear canister, and they took his gear and everything and put it into storage. At this point, they were unsure of what was going on, but there was no missing person case filed at this point. On July 26th, his mom contacted the daughter to say that she hadn't heard from him, she was becoming concerned, but there had been many times where Matt loved to be in, in the solitude of the wilderness, so the alarms really weren't raised until the 29th, which was seven days after the campsite was packed up. A friend called Goodyear to investigate what happened with the car, and they told her that the car had been ready since July 18th, that they had left Matthew a message saying that it was ready, and he never responded or picked up the car. Jill then called the ranger and the ranger insisted that they file a missing persons case which unfortunately was 13 days after he actually disappeared. There have been several unconfirmed sightings over the years. A retired cop said that he saw Green at a gas station in Nevada. A woman said that she had given Green and his dog a ride to Colorado which we know is not possible because Green did not have a dog. Once the family realized he was missing, they contacted Verizon and put in an emergency request for a phone ping, but Verizon told them that the phone had been powered down quite a long time ago and that the only information they could give them was that the phone last pinged in, a, in and around the Mammoth Lakes area. SAR also had a very hard time starting this search because they had no start location. They did not know Matt, where Matt was going, so it was very hard for them to deduce where to even begin the search.
They did their best with the information at hand, but the area is so vast with so many wilderness areas and so much ground to cover, they just eventually uh, had to call off the search. And unfortunately, not a trace of him has been found since that day. No clues, nothing. Matthew was such a wonderful influence to everybody he ever met. He was in the Peace Corps, he was a school teacher. I mean, he was just the type of person that defines being a good person. And I really, really hope that God will give his family the peace of mind to one day, hopefully soon, let them know what happened. And I really, I think that maybe in this case, there could have been foul play. It's hard to say, but he just seemed like such a strong and amazing hiker and talented in so many areas and who's to say that he just didn't meet the wrong person getting a hitch into town or trying to pick up his car or maybe he got into a an altercation with the people at the car dealership it's just so hard to say but I really find it hard to believe that someone as talented as him could have gotten himself in trouble up there on the mountain and even if he did I mean we all human we make mistakes you'd think that there'd be something found by now so it's really hard to say in this case and I really just hope that like in all the other cases of missing people that we can keep their stories alive and in the spotlight and people to know what these cases are about and who these people are and so that if they do hear something or if they do know something they can call the proper authorities and if they are out on a hike and they come across something they know what it's regarding and they know what to do and once again my Thoughts and prayers go out to the Green family. I really, really hope that we can find closure soon.